Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we move from Artois, France to Champagne, France, from the 25th of September through the 6th of November 1915 for the Second Battle of Champagne. As the French army was assaulting the various German positions, French General Joseph Joffrey, who came from a family-owned vineyard and had been in the French army for the last 45 years, led the French attack. Joffrey was joined by French General Philippe Pétain, who would go on to be the hero of Verdun later in the war but unfortunately would become a Nazi German collaborator during World War II. Going back to the old maxim, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. The two of them led the 2nd and 4th French Army, consisting of 27 divisions, with each division averaging 16,000 men for a total of more than 430,000 French soldiers. Fighting the French was German General Erich von Falkenhayn, a lifelong German soldier who started at the age 11, and with him was General Karl von Einem, who had been in charge of the Prussian buildup before the war. Combined, they oversaw 19 divisions, each consisting of about 17,500 men, for a total of at least 330,000 or more men of the German Third Army. In the end though, the bigger numbers of the French army did not work out, and Germany walked away with a W for this one. The first 20 divisions of the French army assaulted the German fortifications at 9.15 a.m. on September 25th. Following quickly after the first wave, another seven divisions consisting of six cavalry and one infantry would provide support. The initial wave slammed into the Germans, breaking their lines at four spots, some of which reached Arstelung, the primary German defensive line. The only thing that saved those positions was barbed wire, which the French could not get through. What is it with barbed wire and Allied troops not having wire clearing tools? French artillery had been very effective in the assault, but the same French artillery continued to shell those positions once the French took control, resulting in friendly fire. During that wave, the French took more than 15,000 German prisoners, but in exchange, their body count was very high. The German command, however, was aware the French were ready to attack and had prepared by moving most of the artillery behind Arstelon, denying the French the opportunity of capturing the artillery. On September 26, the French commenced the follow-up attack and started to break through the German line at Arstelon. A quick counterattack by the Germans was the only reason the line was saved, and the Germans used that success to recapture their trenches. By this point, the French artillery was out of ammunition and they were unable to push, and by October 3rd, Joffrey seemed to have given up on the idea and ordered his commanders to grind the Germans with attrition. It wasn't until November 6th that Joffrey relent and the lines just became the new normal. The French losses were extreme, with more than 145,000 killed, wounded, missing, or captured. Meanwhile, the Germans suffered around 75,000 killed, wounded, missing, with at least 25,000 of them being captured. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.